like you know the homeless issues that we've heard of uh, that we see and that we've heard of in our community outreach um, thus far and like the work and work that we're doing but ultimately the goals of the event primarily is to try to help people kind of get that motivation again to try to look for housing right so there have been past events I know that there was one in the spring um, from chat which I don't know the uh, what's the acronym for that it's a yeah, cold it's a homeless action team. Oh, action team um, and it's a part of the coalition of homeless service providers it's a subcommittee um, and what their goal essentially was to kind of do something similar to, to what we're doing but also a little different but their goal was in the spring was to kind of like yeah like push for people to have to get intake and a coordinated entry and I'll explain that um, but also just kind of like bring resources to the unhoused residents in Chinatown um, what our goal is is to kind of broaden that a little bit and kind of make it more of a community event um, to try to reconcile like making it a community based event to try to make it something that's attractive for the people in these neighborhoods to like come and bring their families and bring their kids and we're working on getting different things for uh, children to be here <clears throat> so but then ultimately so that's like a priority to make it more of a community event but B definitely um, really just trying to first get folks motivated about housing and getting being, being put on lists so that they can receive public housing hopefully be eligible for it but be trying to and this is kind of something that like we're really learning about as a city of coordinated entry so like between HMIS and CARS the two federal intake programs that are used for homeless folks for people who are unhoused um, to essentially try to make it very efficient as to what resources they're getting what services they're getting and then also like who is getting what service. So in a lot of times cities, well not so much cities, but service providers, they run into a lot of issues because people tend to like double up their, like the services they get, right? So if I'm receiving a certain service at one service provider, if there was an HMIS and CARS, then I could essentially go to all the other providers and do the same thing and no one would really be able to keep track of like what, A, like what I'm actually receiving and B, what the, what's the outcome of that? What's the purpose of me receiving that? Am I actually getting any closer to being housed or any closer to being healthier? Um, so it's an intake program that's designed to get A, get people on lists for like housing who are like at, of the highest priority or the highest need to help them uh, get avail, avail themselves to public housing, like Section 8 housing, something like very low income housing, low income housing. Um, but B, also to like figure out which resources are most necessary for them um, for different folks. And then C, I guess like the tertiary goal is to just kind of bring resources again to like people in Chinatown to really show them like, hey, like, you know, like this isn't just, you know, like we're homeless and or you're homeless and we're here to help you for a few hours. It's really just to like, let's really try to figure out a way to get people who want to be housed. Our survey showed that 82% um, of people who were surveyed in this area who are unhoused, they want to be housed, right? And so figuring out for them what are the barriers for that? Is that drug abuse? Is it housing prices, which is usually the number one thing, um, housing prices in this area? And then actually figuring out, okay, like what is an actionable, what are actionable steps we can take to help them? So providing resources for them, service providers coming, <coughs> tabling, so that way people can come up, they can have food, they can listen to music, uh, we'll have a stage set up, but I think the stage might change, but the site plan is still pretty much the same. It's going to encompass all Solid Ed Street. Um, so it's, we're really going to try to make it like a true community event, community block party, but with the sole push to like really try to get folks excited about getting back to or trying to get into housing, but most importantly trying to figure out how to get into coordinated entry and get some intakes going. And then that fits in with like the Salinas, the city of Salinas, the Chinatown, our Chinatown revitalization plan, um, because through all the through all the working groups that we do, we just figure out that encampment seem to be the number one barrier to like growth in the area to revitalization in this area. It's just it always goes back to encampments, um, and different people have different takes on how like what people want, and we're probably going to try to like ask you guys a little bit about what you think. Um, of that, but we also don't want to keep asking you guys the same questions. Um, but really, we want to figure out okay, like, you know, the Mid Pen project is going in. Um, 
like what number of units would be available to who would actually like be eligible here for the very low income um, single units, but also like once we start to really try to revitalize this area, like where are the homeless people going to go, right? And our goal really isn't to just kind of push them on to the next thing, but to actually the people who want to get housed who are just having a lot of trouble in, for whatever reason, trying to figure out the best way to help them so they can actually like feel like they're a member of the community because they are members of our community. So, so and Luis, by the way, you should like give him a little hand because like he totally did this site plan and I've seen like past site plans and like Luis is objectively far superior. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Um, so on this one I'm just going to kind of uh, give a little explanation of how this event is going to run. The city already went through the special events application process and this event is approved and uh, uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow Debbie and I will be going to the county and to meet in our health um, to get our health permit application. But this is how so far the event is planned out. So we are going to be having uh, uh, the street that is going to get close is going to be Solid Vance Street, uh, and we're going to have booth events. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, booth events all the way across, uh, with evenly spaced out uh, trash can and recycling bins uh, that are going to be evenly spaced out. We also have a bigger trash container that all of these stuff are going to be dumped into whatever trash we generate as an event, and then uh, right across, uh, a little closer to uh, East Lake. We're going to have the tables that people can see and enjoy their food, but also that's where the main food booth is going to be located. Uh, and then we're going to have the stage. So this is more or less how the layout is working. Um, and so in this sort of map, we also have embedded like the current locations for ADA, where the two main uh, bathrooms, so Dorothy's Place and the Chinatown Health Services Center, they're going to be letting us use their uh, restroom facilities. They have uh, one ADA bathroom. Uh, for each gender on each location. So we'll be using that as part of the event. We're going to have signs that indicate to people attending the event, this is where the bathrooms are located. And um, the distance between the, we know that for the um, health department, we need to make sure that people helping at the booth, they have to be 200 feet from any bathroom. So that one, uh, we make sure we place it more or less in good relationship to that. Um, and I think with this, uh, the other big item is parking. So we're going to try to have people help during the event. And if people need to get parked at a different locations in the neighborhood, we're going to help them. But we're going to have uh, some parking available at the Chinatown Health Services Center, as well as we have some parking here on this street, California. And also, Bridge Alley, is, uh, that little section is a two-way street. So people could park on uh, both sides. So uh, we are uh, doing our uh, best to make sure this plan is as comprehensive as possible in all uh, different areas. Um, when it comes to the food, uh, this is we are really looking to have the Buddhist temple and use in their kitchen to prepare, cook, and then we are going to transport it to the main uh, food booth where we are going to have all the food with an enclosed tent, making sure everything is clean and uh, all the foods are prepared properly and kept at the right temperature. See, they have to be warm or they have to be kept cold. So um, this is how we have it. And a little later in the, uh, this presentation, uh, we are going to have an opportunity for people if they want to have an extra booth at the event for either your organization or you want to join or pair up with somebody else and have a booth, that's more than welcome. Uh, we are currently also working on um, trying to get the uh, mobile health clinic uh, as well as potentially having some, uh, like a fire truck for the kids or a police car also that might be able to join the event. So we are going to uh, add those to this uh, plan as we get them, but this is how uh, the layout is looking. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Um, just more information. On the booth, each booth that is coming, each booth will be giving out clothes, hygiene, socks, Shirts. They will be giving out something. We're also going to do a raffle. Each booth is making a raffle basket. The basket that they're making is going to be catered to the homeless. It could be a blanket, a pillow, you know, hygiene products. And then, um, because some of the homeless have probably never won a raffle in their whole lives. So we want to do, you know, to make them feel a part of our community. So we're going to be giving out um, the raffles. 
And every booth, we have 32 booths right now. We have seven car clubs coming in that are, we're not bringing the cars, because you know, we can't watch the cars or anything. And, but seven car clubs are coming and they, some of them have kids clothes, some of them have candy, like candy bars, you know, so that they, they're gonna really like do it for them. And I mean, every, put it there, everything you can think of that the homeless will need, the blue tarps, all that, there's a booth that is taking care of something. And we have also have five mothers. Three of the mothers have lost their, their, their sons were murdered out here. But these mothers are coming back with their families to give to the homeless in memory of their sons. So we're also, they also wanna, I just got a call today from another one who last week her son was killed on, on uh, Del Monte. And Sunday, that she's in back Victorville right now, um, making burial plans. But she happened to see the flyer, and uh, she called me and asked um, if she can come out and help. And I said, I, absolutely. This is this is what it's for. It's for all of us, uniting together as one. Um, many years ago, um, when I was 14, I was out here for a year and a half. And um, I, I made it out. I made it out and everything. I've been working where I've been working for 25 years now. I've been married next year, will be 38 years. I have three kids, six grandkids. You know, I live in a home, not in a shack. You know, you know what I mean? I, and um, for my 35th birthday, um, I told my family, I says, I don't want you guys to buy me nothing, but what I want you to do is get baloney or tuna, make a lunch, they go, what are you doing now? Because I'm always doing something. I told them I want to spend my birthday out there. So we came out, so I'm, I'm always coming out with different organizations trying to do something because I, I remember where I was from and I, I don't forget, you know, where I came from and, and, and I'm grateful. And you know, I'm just, just sitting here with each and every one of you guys is, I mean, it's, might not be nothing to you, but it's something big to me. Yeah, just to provide some context, like, Deb, like Debbie pretty much had like two thirds of the event already by the time she walked in. So <laughs> we were so like for us. I mean, as as my, and also like Luis has really gone through in a very short amount of time a pretty crazy application process, like a pretty comp. I'm pretty sure if you could ask this guy to like feet, he would tell you everything about the plan. But yeah, like a very we're very very grateful that Debbie came in and pretty much had like two thirds of the event already squared away. So that's really like, I mean, it just kind of shows like. Here, here's community members that are very committed to making sure that people here that are living here realize that like you can you know like get out of a tough situation a but B you can commit to actually serving your community and treating people who are members of your community as community members but C actually like effectively like trying to develop that motivation so that they can find housing also we know some of you and, and even even with uh, our resources um, Brickley farms just donated 600 milks and chocolate milks for the event to give out. You know what I mean? They're, they're giving things, a lot of, you know. Um, but we know that they can't come out here, you know, because they have big businesses. You guys have things that you do. But just by you, like, the, uh, we're, we're the ones who are allowing us to use the kitchen, that's like, ah, oh, you, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's big. It, it, it's, 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 big. it's a that's big thing. You know, just, just to allow us, you're allowing us to do, you know, what, what we're able to do. So you're as big as a part of this as we are. You know, and, and I, trust me, this is, I mean, this is my right hand person. I, mean, I can call because I'm like, I mean, I'm constantly changing things, trying to plan this, make it, you know, really safe for everybody. I mean, make the homeless feel like there's somebody to change. See, the whole idea of the homeless for me, is to not go out there and take their stuff and throw it. Some of them might have got that from their daughter or their son who may have passed away. Or, you know, that meant that was like a jewel to them. But the thing is to talk to them, work with them, so that they can get rid of them, this, self, this stuff themselves if they should qualify for one of these apartments. You know, have them do it. 
because if they do it, that they're going to want to keep doing it. Because I, I know by working with people, if you give them a pat on the back or if you tell them the littlest thing, like, God, you look so nice today. Oh, I like that top. You know what? They're going to make sure that next time you come around, they're going to be right in front of you trying to make you look at that top. <laughs> so that you can give them a compliment again. Are you looking for donations also for to give out to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, take us because you have that little thing we can bring back to our groups and yeah. No, donations. I mean we're 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 we're, we're taking anything because there there is so much people out there. I mean, when we've come out, I I mean it it hurts me. I I cry now because there is so much kids out there right now, little kids. They're they're living in the cars and. I mean that's like oh my gosh I wish I, I I I wish I had a place where I could just house them all because I love to cook it up. I mean I could cook it up. <laughs> and you know I, I would do that. I mean that's just me. And my husband he always says Debbie. Instead of bringing dogs and cats home, you always bring kids. <laughs> because I always do. If I see somebody in the street that ran away, I'll work with them. Let me call. I'm gonna call your mom. So your mom knows where you're at, you know, because I would want a call from my mom. And he would be always bringing kids home, you know. And, but it's, uh, again, I, I might be where I'm at right now, but I work at it every day, you know. Um, I've been clean in December 16 will be 38 years that I, that I have been clean and everything. And, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I can't forget. I, I, I can't forget there's people that need us out there. The people that really don't want to be there, but they have no other choice. And but I, I'm grateful. Say more about and about peace in the streets. Who we are, what we. Are. Oh, oh, peace in the streets. Okay. Well, we started this about was three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Four years ago, and it was just we had um, quite a few um, <coughs> homicides in town, and people just didn't know what to do, how to react. So. Debbie, myself, and a couple other people thought, you know what, let's just have like a little get together. Well, we thought it was going to be, be a little, little get together. together. <laughs> but um, we went out into the community, talked to a few people. The next thing you know, we had a big rally plan. And so we did it in Castroville um, because it was easier for permits. <laughs> but um, we. <laughs> 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 no digs, but. <laughs> So, so she had a couple connections, and so um, we ended up having a huge rally where we gave out uh, grocery bags full of food from donations. Um, we gave out clothes. We fed um, over two thousand people free. We, yeah, we fed two thousand people for free. We're expecting like maybe less than a thousand, probably. But we said, okay. I said, Debbie, we gotta think big. You never know. And sure enough, thank. I don't know where everything came from, but we fed 2,000 people. Wow. Um, and then the other good thing was that we had just gone to uh, some other like rallies, and then there was these um, artists, well, groups. Um, most of them Christian groups, but they all have like they they have their songs. A story, and they a, have a, a story. story, but they're like old school style, or they change an old school song Mariachi, to make it. Yeah, so they do it in Spanish and English and mariachi and reggae and old school hip hop, blues, um, every, blues jazz, and, but they all have positive messages. Um, and then they all volunteered their time. The only thing they said is, okay, if you guys can give us some gas money, because some did come all the way from LA, San Diego, Northern California. Um, we had them come from all over and they all donated their time. And we had such a good response. Um, not just from the parents who had lost kids, but from the youth themselves. Um, we had quite a few come into community service hours, and they were they didn't care if they got their hours or not. What they liked was the um, having the agencies out there too that were geared towards the youth, uh, to letting them letting them know like um, like we had um, oh, what's that word job for job mm -hmm. from DS. Yes. Yeah. Jeff Cor came out and talked to them. We had somebody from Behavioral Health. We had someone from Probation. Um, we had people from um, what's the gym? What's the name of the gym? The gym. No, the one that was out there. The gym. 
this is what you're proposing maybe for a future um, block party or, or yeah, no this is happening this, this November the 18th yeah. no what Ours you're was, talking about right yeah. now what we did was turned out big and actually we ended up doing it annually now but then this year for when this came up about this we thought we can do it in a little smaller scale and catered to here, the homeless catered to the homeless ours was catered more towards the youth but now we're doing it catered more towards the homeless and then today i found out too that the nutrition education teacher from um Heart now is having their students it was already pre-planned before this but they're be going to be serving food out of Dorothy's kitchen. So that's going to be another location for them to, to get food. Okay. Um, once I told them about this, now they're going to start looking also for donations to give out when they give out their meals. So you just kind of... Yeah. So this is open to the public? Yeah, it's uh, open to the public. So the food is all free? Food is free, yeah, music, it's a everything. free event free. for everyone. So I'm trying to get a handle on, say, Arm for the Chinese Association. What what would be our tasks or what can we get, contribute in helping organize and being on on the street? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, that's, I'm just trying and to actually, we have that for you, so it comes later there. in the in the presentation. We actually try, also part of this meeting, we're trying to develop a, a volunteer plan. So that's when we want everyone's help to be able to coordinate and make sure this event runs smoothly. So we're going to have that, and we actually, at the end of this meeting, we're going to pass the flyer, and then if you want to be a volunteer and you want to help us out, or if you want a booth, you sign up, and or a booth, you and then sign we'll up. Pass it around now. And so, um, just kind of uh, following on uh, what Debbie was saying and kind of like what we heard, the testimonial. Also, part of this event is going to have people that went through a similar story to the one that she was just describing. So this is just like a quick summary of how the event is going to run. And like in between like the people and the band singing and people eating food, we're going to have people that have gone through this story and provide testimonials of how they went from being unhoused, unsheltered, to become like house, have a job, and uh, stories like that. So this just gives you a quick rundown of how the event is planned to go with the layout that we already have. And the next part is going to be, I'll let Melissa uh, take over the volunteer plan and event booths. Well, really, it's, it's not too much to take over. We just, you know, we welcome anybody who is available and willing um, if you yourself are not available, maybe someone from your organization um, can come and either have a booth if, you know, behavioral health. Um, I believe Anastasia was in talk with, I don't know if one of you ladies or someone from your department. Um, social services, I know Anastasia was in talks with Elliot about that. And um, so we definitely want to coordinate, you know, information and, and booth um, if, if that's available for the day of the event. And then also um, the event is gonna have security and things like that. But we would like, you know, just to show a unified um, community and let, like they were saying, let the homeless and also the residents in the area know that this is, the city wants to engage in a community um, revitalization and we wanna bring the families and, um, you know, help the homeless, um, but also, you know, with new developments, um, things are changing in the neighborhood. So we want to definitely have the residents feel that they're part of this community, which they are. Um, so please volunteer. And if you have questions, um, or, you know, if you have a question mark, put, put a question mark next to your name and we can give you a call. And if you want more detailed information about what exactly volunteering consists of, um, you know, we can discuss that. Yeah, and then uh, just to uh, kind of give an idea out there, um, we this just kind of came up recently as I was attending one of the meetings, and I think I thought it would be a really nice thing to do, and it's called the wishing wishing tree, which you can see over there. So I was talking to some of my teammates, and uh, maybe one of the organizations could help us like manpower this uh, whole idea of having like a tree, and then we could. Uh, kind of like go along the theme of this event, the color. So maybe have like these uh, purple slips and then people will write. So 
whoever one is attending the event, they will write like a wish either for to help someone, a homeless person, or what they want for their families, or what is what do they think the goal of this event should be. So if anyone would like to volunteer or like that idea, please let us know, and then we will help you organize, or you can help us out, get a group together and mend this as we are having the block party. And there will also be a kids area, family area with, um, you know, events, crafts tailored to, you know, for children. We put in an application to First Five to see if they can bring their Willy Mobile out, which is um, a mobile museum, sort of. Um, so we definitely welcome ideas and volunteers for that um, area as well. Or if you know anybody who you know, has a capacity for donating um, games or activities, uh, please put your name down so we can contact you. Sorry, you know, my first thought, I, you know, some of you know that I'm really a history buff, and I was born and raised in Chinatown, so I, I don't know if this would be an occasion where there's a chance that I can have, show some old historic photos or something oh, of the old neighborhood. Nice. And, 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 and with all these yeah. housing that's being built, they're going to cover all the old spots, like in Midpen, you know, that's where the Chinatown was started. And so uh, I, have, I have pictures of the, uh, the structures there and the temple there. But the thing, and, and, and they would be blown up pictures. So I don't know if there's a chance to, to, to display them uh, with everything going on. You know, I don't know if anybody would be interested in that. The answer to that is yes. Yes, please. Absolutely. Indoor. That would like to contribute to that. Really, I think that's something that, like, yeah. like, whenever I go out and, like, talk to people, like, out here who live in tents and stuff, they always, it's interesting, right, because you want to bring housing here so people can get housed, but then they always tell me, like, you know, like, you guys, like, you really have to, like pay attention to the culture and the history of this place, you know, and I'm like, yeah, and then they say like, when well, you guys took that down the one building over there, and I was like, well, you know, like, no one, that building just burned down, like, no one, no one took it down, but no, I think that in any way, that especially which, just because this Chinatown is so important just because of where its location is and like the, the different groups of people who come together wanted to like live and work together, and just like where it is in terms of other, the other Chinatowns in California, like I think that that's something actually that I don't think has really been brought up in our conversations. Yeah. That really should be. Well, especially yeah. in this Chinatown, it's been so diverse. We yeah. have yeah. all these groups coming, living here, working here, visiting here. So it's. But I think it's that's a really good point, years. though, because that's something that we haven't like. We totally should have thought about that. But that's a I think having some sort that, of yeah, historical pop. Of because I know that Ace. I know you guys just did that, right? It's yeah, we did a pop-up museum. Yeah. yeah. So and we're 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 trying to collaborate with. CSUMB VPA for visual public arts. And we may be able to put a project together with students at that point in time. They're gunning toward the, that day before we talk to them about it. So I might collaborate with. Uh, By the we know we're, we're very aware of Wellington's collection. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I want to be aware of it. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and that's uh, and that's a good thing right now too. I'm on. Well, it's social media, but on Facebook, there's a, you know, you're from Salinas, and there was a mm -hmm. big, big thing about some of the <coughs> Chinese restaurants that used to be in Chinatown. It's like, I remember coming to Chinatown to eat Chinese food uh, when I was little, but <coughs> how the, how beautiful the inside of the, the restaurants were with the wood, the red wood. I, I just remember seeing red wood everywhere, um, and just the conversations of, people coming into Chinatown, not just to go there, but there was a little grocery store that was that used to be over here too. Um, going to the to the little grocery store and um, just coming into the area um, to shop and eat and see what was what was being planned out here. So that would be interesting to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah just a quick fact based on that, Salinas Chinatown is the only Chinatown between LA and San Francisco. Wow. So we gotta embrace that. We're one of the very few that have a Chinese cemetery. I was looking at oh, something in the valley yeah. over by yeah. Marysville and things like that. There are ghost towns over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we are unique. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so so very. Yeah, yeah. And also the, the Filipino group also has a lot of pictures too of, of uh, living here too. Yeah. Amazing. 
So definitely, we can have booze. Uh, out, the, out the historical photographs, that would be something amazing. And I'm pretty sure, like, this past weekend, I was with Ace, and uh, as people were going into Star Market, they were, like, stopping, and people were getting curious. I actually got this person, uh, uh, he was probably in his 70s, 80s, and he just approached the tent that we had the booze, and he just went, like, when I was a kid, I would pass papers through Solid that Street. And he, the, you know, the picture did not even have Solid that Street, he recognized it right away. And, you know, like, people are always curious, and sometimes you might have people that were from the area, they know, they, they know, and they will recognize it. So it's good to have some of that. So, um, anybody else have questions? Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> this has been really helpful. I have talked with you guys about having a booth. Um, yeah. And so, I'm from Mid Pen. Oh. And so, just to let you guys know, they're one of the big, big sponsors for yeah. this event. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you need to send me an invoice. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Once we start generating costs, <laughs> like, uh, expenses, we'll send it to you for sure. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we have an internal call. We'll have folks from property management services attending to talk about what the path looks like. How do you start to prepare and apply to eventually, you know, become eligible to live in the housing? Um, but just do we bring our own table? I mean, what are some yes. of Will you tell so me later? Or what are we? Want to have a booth? If you can bring your booths, your tables, your chairs, uh, potentially, uh, and if you have a pop up, bring yeah. your, your pop up. <laughs> yeah. How big is this a space? So like the we're pop up, looking pop up, at ten by ten. Ten by ten. Ten by ten. Wonderful. So ten by ten space. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And we okay. need to what we're going to be doing with the booths. That's why we need to know who wants a booth. Because when you come in, we're going to have you check in, and when you check in, you're going to have a number, an assigned number, and that's where we're going to we're going to come out, me and my husband, and do all the lines and um, do the numbers, so you'll know exactly where you're going to be, at. and then you'll have a lot of youth um, assisting you and helping you too. Okay, and then wow. and then with regard to giving out <coughs> certain things like socks and then the raffle basket, will we supply those, and will you tell us what we should be? getting for our giveaway or what we what we're doing each, each 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 booth like I said it's making a basket and they're putting their name on the basket because when we raffle the basket we're going to recognize who gave the basket and where it's coming from and then we'll announce the winner and we'll keep the names because we know some of the homeless are going to go back so we're going to have a board with all the numbers and with that ticket on that on that basket so we create our own basket yes whatever whatever you want but catered to a homeless Okay, and then Anything. what about, you also said there were giveaways like socks and blankets and things. Yeah, <laughs> people people are giving away, like there is a group giving away um, children's clothes, but they're also doing a candy bar on the side. And okay, so what should we, I should, what should we? What we're, what we're needing, what, what I see, what, we're, what the homeless are going to be needing, because it's going to be raining, they're going to get wet, it's going to get cold, um, t-shirts. T-shirts and underclothes that I don't see a lot of that socks, blue tarps to cover you know the the, the, the tent anything warm 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 clothes. The only one thing I like is um like and you can find like camping stores something like that like sanitation wipes that a lot of people use like when they go camping or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think those are just critical. Um, okay, and how many? Okay, well, that's up to you because um, certain organizations won't have a certain budget, so it's just it'll be first come first serve. And, and you, when we've come out and um, done giveaways for them, they know it's a first come first serve. Um, so whatever your budget can afford, um, usually we try to do a hundred to one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. um, I know we do a little bit more, but most yeah. of the times we ask people either a hundred or a hundred and fifty because we. It's, we're, do you have to, because now usually we're out there only a couple of hours. Now we're going to be out there from from ten to four with the live music, with everything you know going on. So and then another just like to like really kind of emphasize like this is a real. We're trying to be as comprehensive as we can. That this is a community. Like you know, we're not just trying to give people stuff and then walk away. Like no. really, the goal is to try to say hey like you are a member of the community here are the very cool things about the member about this community the history in the past and then invite the community around chinatown or like this part of chinatown as well 
but also just make sure that they know that hey like our goal is to help give you what you need so that you can like look for housing so that you can get back on your feet you know the goal isn't just for like a city to go out and take a few photos and say we're doing good and then walk away also any in any in information you have about your organization please have it there because someone asks questions and stuff and that's what we want is yeah, well that was, I mean we knew that part, for sure, to hand out information. And sorry, on the basket, is there like budget for no, the basket? No, whatever you, it's up, it's up to you. The basket is up to you. There's also those cards, and you, you know those, um, the ones from the swamp meets, you know those cards that you open up and you can throw stuff in there? The shopping the carts? Yes, yes. The wheels. Yeah, those. I told, because some people said, well what, what about if we, something else? I said, well you know what, because they're always taking Shopping, shopping cards, I says, what about a basket to put a bow on it? You know, that'll be a raffle. You know, those could be raffle things, too. So they would love that so they can carry their, their stuff in there. Okay. So what we could look at doing from social services, one of the things that I do is I um, oversee our outreach group. We have the MC Choice. So we have them out in the community, and they've got um, the wireless laptops, wireless printers, so they can go out and take the applications right on site. Nice. So they'll be here. Yeah, they've got a pop-up tent. They, they're professionals. I mean, these guys go all over the county. They've got it down. Yeah. So yeah. you've got my name on the list, and I'm here representing Elliot today. Oh, by the way, okay. I'm sorry. He he had something else that he was tied up with. So since I oversee the group, I figured it, he was he figured I would be the best choice to come in and yeah. let you know. So um, we'll have at least probably two of our staff here, and um, I'm going to work to try and see if I can get an eligibility worker here because. Our average staff are clerical staff, and they can't they can't cross that line of eligibility and answer questions about eligibility for some of the customers. We need to have an eligibility worker be able to do that. So um, I'll I'll do what I can on that one, but I definitely can make sure we have a table and a, and a space for our MC Choice folks. Yeah. Even, if, even if they don't, if you can't, but at least having the website because um, they do have the center where they can go and use the. The, the computer, CSUMB so the CSU and B market um, right. center. So um, even show, telling them, okay, you can go to this website, and these are the basic information they're going to need. No, that way, if they can't do it here, question. they know that they can go into the center and sign up themselves. Right. Well, and what we also do because sometimes connectivity is an issue. Probably yeah. will be down here. Yeah. We'll have they, they have um, their their tokens on hotspots and whatnot. But they also bring the manual applications as well with the uh, uh, return envelopes and everything. So it's very self-contained. If they can't do it electronically, they at least give it to them. Or sometimes the, the residents don't want to sit there and give all the information and, and do all yeah. that. They'd rather take it home and fill it out. Yeah. So they can also do a mail-in application for Medi-Cal and CalFresh. Yeah. Also, so. um, the setup is from 8 to 10. Setup is from 8 to 10 because the event starts right at 10. Yeah. And, and I will send an email reminder yeah, before. that's that's important. Yeah, like uh, we will assign you numbers, as Debbie was saying. So we'll give you numbers and we'll give you instructions of how we are going to set up. <laughs> and they're, they're able to drive in because they have like yeah. their vehicles. They can yes. drive in. Well, that's what we're going to do at eight to ten. Seven. They can do that eight to nine thirty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have to be eight, eight to nine thirty because cars have to the be cars. Out. And after that, we're not going to let no cars but come right. come inside. <laughs> Maybe a space for them to park on the perimeter somewhere. Uh, for some of the organizations depending on how many people we get for sure we have the Chinatown Health Services Center some of the parking so uh, we are going to have that parking for the artists and whichever space we have we can also have it for the organizations attending and you know we might be a little tight on parking but we'll do our best to make sure if we see a couple more spots reroute people that's why we also wanted to have the volunteers so that they can even help us with uh, rerouting cars so the traffic flow continues smoothly and so to maximize the parking space. And they'll be here early, so they'll get a parking. Yeah. Most likely, they, they will yeah. be able to get a parking. Most, most likely, the organization. Yeah, because they'll be, yeah. be here early. So, uh, so that's the part. And then we, at the very end, we just wanted to wrap up with this discussion question for, uh, for the whole group. And uh, because we wanted to be able to uh, think a little bit more about uh, this whole process. And uh, as uh, the China Terminalization Plan, uh, you know, we have been talking about several of the items, you know, transportation and all that. But today, given that we are already talking about having this Chinatown block party, that the main focus is to assist the homeless, get into housing and all that, we wanted to just have as a group a quick uh, discussion about this. So, I don't know, the question is, based on our outreach, 
um, you know, how should we address homelessness, how should we address encampments, and how can we as a community assist on improving things? So I don't know if anyone wants to start the conversation. Well, how much potential housing inventory is there? Is there adequate inventory? Is there adequate plans? Yeah, and actually that's one of the... That's what we're in the process of yeah. doing. We're in the process of updating our Chinatown revitalization plan. You know, there's a couple of proposed scenarios of uh, possibly expanding the boundaries of the existing Chinatown area. So that could come into play as well. That would, you know, so it just depends on the boundary. But we're also looking at that. We're looking at existing properties, underutilized properties, zoning, uh, existing zoning, proposed zoning. So um, unfortunately, Larry, I don't have a, a, a hard number on that right now just because we're still in the draft planning stage. But that's one thing we are looking at. So we are, the city is working on that. So maybe as part of this realization plan, we can create that inventory to see what are the low-income uh, opportunities that we have for people to, to to go into housing. And I know, like Jimmy and I, we, we are actually, uh, when we were talking about this, that's one of the things that Jimmy too had mentioned, you know? We were talking about being able to house them, but how? So creating like a, an inventory of the available units will be a good thing to have as part of this plan. What else do you guys what, what else comes to, to mind? Well, I'd say, what are ways that we can think about to attract developers like Midpen, you know, to our area? And what developers are there out there, such as Midpen, <laughs> you know, and what are op more opportunity sites that, you know, the community can help the city identify that. And, um, you know, if anyone has thoughts on that. So I guess I'm a little confused, but so based on your outreach, outreach, I mean, I guess when I read that, I'm thinking like, shouldn't you be surveying the people who come to the event? Is that, mm -hmm. that's the outreach to answer these questions, right? Yeah, but who, are you outreaching to yeah. us? Who, I think as, as a group, we wanted to start the conversation first with the group, so that when we go out there, we kind of, a little okay. bit more strategic as to and how so, we target it. So related to that, so the goal is to get people into coordinated entry. How are you going to get them to do the to complete the intake on that? Is that how they get the raffle ticket, or how are you going to? Do I that? think initially that's what we were thinking, but mm -hmm. as we have began asking the service providers how the intake take uh, takes place, we started to realize that the intake process is actually um, kind of a more one-on-one. -on -one. It has to be private. The person has to feel comfortable. So we realized that. Uh, that might be a little hard to do, but that's the goal, and we're looking to potentially work with Interim to have them do that. And we probably should have also said that Anastasia's out this week on vacation. Yeah. Um, so there are things that are still um, unclear as you know to how exactly things are going to go, and with regards to the raffle. So I think. Um, we're still going to fine tune some of that, but I think the discussion that we wanted to have right now more pertains to as the TAC and working group for the revitalization plan, what are ways or ideas or thoughts about how we can address some of these issues and, you know, um, help the homeless get into housing. One thing I've run into, um, I was an eligibility worker before I came into the position many, many years ago. And we used to have customers come in who were homeless individuals. And we would try to work with them to get into housing or go through Section 8. For one, Section 8 is like years and years and years on the waiting list, uh, more often than not. Just because there's not that many housing opportunities and there's way more people than it's available. That's one issue. But another is um, that I would work with some of the men, especially, who would come in to apply for general assistance. and they were homeless and we try to get them into housing and he said, I'd have quite a few say, I don't want to go because they made me follow the rules. I want to do what I want to do, that's why I live on the street. So it, there needs to be, I think, a component of the behavioral health that can work with these folks to help them with a rehab project or rehabilitation of some sort and show them that value of having the permanent housing and then getting into that sustainability and then self-sufficiency. Yeah. That's always our goal. I oversee the GA program as well is working with our customers who are employable to have them 
do our job sites like they work we have them work hours right here at the Chinatown Health Center and they do like four or five hours a day and that's how they get their grant and the goal is is to have them get job skills work on a resume and get into that day-to-day -day work environment so then eventually they can transition off of aid and be self-sufficient. And you bring up a really great point. Um, I know HUD is moving into more of a model where it's low barrier um, and housing first. And so that's a shift that the city is trying to make with regards to um, targeting its funding and its dollars to service providers who are following that model. Um, and so it's um, definitely something new and change isn't always easy um, for the service providers. And of course, we all know that housing um, is low, like housing opportunities itself are low. Um, but there are a hundred vouchers. I'm not sure how many are available, but I know in total there's a hundred housing vouchers available to homeless that can be utilized without them going on the actual um, housing waiting list. So that might be something that your agency, um, if you have somebody who's homeless, they don't necessarily need to go on the um, Section 8, but they can, if they're homeless, they can be eligible for this other voucher specifically for homeless folks to get them housed. And will that group be here for the event as well? The Housing Authority? Um, I'm not a, oh, well, they're, they gave uh, us a, a grant for the event. Um, I'm not 100% sure, though, they're going to be having a booth. So we'll confirm right. that. I mean, that would just make a logical link with, right. with the homeless well, community to have them here to be able to. So a couple things on that. So the general Section 8 waiting list is now open. Right. It's going to close before November 18th. Mm -hmm. right. So that's too bad. But the homeless vouchers, actually, you need a referral from a service provider that has a contract with the housing authority. Oh, okay. So what we need are the service providers that have signed that contract with the housing authority they're the ones that would, because they have to agree to provide some services to the individuals mm -hmm. for a year, or two years, or 18 months or something okay. once they're housed. Okay. So it'll be, you know, Dorothy's Place and others who have that contract executed. They're the ones that would be the path to those vouchers. Okay. Um, so I assume they're going to be here, and I assume you guys are working with the coalition as well. Right. On this. Yeah, um, the coalition is not going to be available for the event um, and I'd also like to just put it out there that um, the coalition and um, CSUMB and Dorothy's they've done similar events to this before yep. so I'd like to recognize them for those efforts and um, be clear that this is an extension of, of efforts past um, right so um, you know we just want to thank them for that and you know we all acknowledge and, and value those past experiences. Um, had, was anybody involved in those past events? In Penn? Okay. So can, maybe you can give us some pros and cons, um, things that worked or didn't work that we can maybe apply to this event. I think what they did, attempted to do is bring the service providers in one spot with a, with a barbecue essentially on solid Street. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it was bringing the people to them to make it a more, more transparent, easier transition or accessibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if anybody was required to walk away with the sign, any sign-ups, but you know that was the that was the idea is to have like a one-stop shopping opportunity on a particular day. So we administered the vulnerability index, mm -hmm. the Spadat, yeah, the Spadat for, for um, in exchange for socks or something else okay. um, and that and so that was part of just a data collection effort to understand the spectrum of need out there which the coalition then you know used um, to, to sort of target outreach and so on. Um, yeah I mean I think you need to have some goals around an outcome like that right. and it, it needs to be the coordinated entry and Somebody's going to have to do that. Um, and it seems like these questions should be what you're asking the homeless folks. You know, what do they need to get out of an encampment? You know, are they ready to follow some rules? Are they ready to pay a portion of their income and rent? You know, what, what are the barriers um, for them, right? I mean, some simple survey. You can't do the intake. 
yeah. right, for cars yeah. than some other simple set of questions so that well, you can understand. Everybody's story is so unique, but, yeah. but maybe with a series of questions you can start to get your arms around the spectrum of it. So that was kind of what, um, like the more that I learned about HMIS and cars, um, and just like how important it is kind of to have this very stable, like interviewing, I guess, uh, cult like environment, you know, because you want them to be as honest as they can, so that way they can develop like more points, right, at least in the assessment. Um, so like initially when we were first thinking of this kind of like, you know, like everyone just kind of has laptops, things like that, I think we're still going to try, we're, we're, we're still going to try to do, um, we're still going to try to get intakes and we're going to, you know, we're going to measure that outcome. Um, we're still going to try to do coordinated entry as well, but that was something that we kind of strategized about too, is like once we started to go around and ask people, you know, and some folks say that, well, it's a weekend and we can't like pay people to go out on the weekend or whatever. Um, then we were just like, okay, well, there's something that we need to take away, like at least data-wise from that. And so that was kind of, yeah, like developing our own quick survey essentially was, um, so either, I guess like we're on the same page. And um, Joe Coletti is our consultant from Urban Initiatives throughout this planning process. And they have been recommending to us to get a by name list so that we know each and every person who's here, um, you know, staying in Chinatown unhoused. So if that's the extent of um, what we can take away from this, per our consultant, um, Urban Initiatives, that would be a big takeaway. So if they have to go get a raffle ticket in order to get something from the booth, that's a great point. We can start that by name list um, if if that's you know the least that we could do. What we can well like what usually what we've done at events that we have done mm -hmm. is we just make like a little card, card and it has the numbers and then with and but then we have them write their name down at the bottom. And then they just we just tell them that if, let's say there's how many booths did you say? Well, there's 32 right 32. now. 32. Okay. Well, let's say there's therapist. 30 booths. We tell them just visit 10. And if, after you visit 10, turn in your card. But well, once they turn in their card, we give them the raffle ticket. But then at least we already have their name. And if they have um, like some have a contact number that they use or a contact address, um, then we ask them, okay, you know, do you want us to send you information or you know, can I? call you for you you talk that you needed this can we call you do you have a phone number um that we can leave a message most of them it's like a, a number that we can leave a message um and then so then when we collect the cards we have that information what we can do this time what i'm thinking is i'm listening to what you guys are saying in those instead of going to all 30 because what my thing is to put all the resource booths close together that way they're not over here, they're not over there, they're not there, you, you are all close together. And then have them go just to those booths. I mean, the other one's okay, they can go get the clothes, they'll automatically go to those. But it's important to me, for me, and for us, it's important that they go to your booths. Because you really have something to offer them that could possibly change their lives. So we can make that ticket where we have them go to them. Monday. And in order for them, what they'll do is take that over there, and you'll talk to them or get their name or how, what, whatever you're going to do in your booth, but you, you will sign it. And what I'll do is get a little stamp or something maybe, and you can stamp that, and we know that they went to that booth. But they can't con that stamp. On the, <laughs> on the back of the card, maybe have a line, like, just so they can write their name, and then they there can write the information. Like, if, yeah, if they want to, instead that. of having to ask each person as they come up, when yes. they get the card, they can write that information. No, that's what we do on the card. We usually have, like, little squares with all the numbers of the booths, mm -hmm. and then down underneath the little squares, we have a space for them to write their name, mm -hmm. and either phone number or address of where they would like stuff. Either and if they mail. want information. If they yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I've, I've found... You, you don't want to be too intrusive, no. and, and you know, no. kind of. You're uh, we're there for a good cause, but you don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Kind when, of deal. when the card is given to given to them, we explain to them, okay, you you need these are the you visit this many booths, and then um, bring it back with your name on it, and if you want to give us your phone number or address to give you more information, write it down. If you don't, you don't have to, and then they turn it in, and we give them the raffle ticket. But it's explained to them when we give them the card. There's also there there's there's also a, a sign-in book that we have 
and, and we have them each sign their name. That's how we always know more or less how many people we have a at the event. Like a guest, a guest book. book. They're, they're, right. they're actually signing a guest book and, and they're given a little nice card with a little prayer on it. So, so if this is open <coughs> to the broader community and then we have this you know, specific population that we're trying to figure out how to serve and the subtitle is First Step to Housing. What are the uh, how is it the first step to housing? I mean, I know what we're doing with regards to what our project, but how else is this a first step to housing? Because one of the things that I hear, not a service provider, you know, build housing, is that you know consistency and follow through is really important. People lose faith because organizations only have so much bandwidth to sort of come out and outreach, and then it kind of fizzles, right? So how are, how is this really going to be the first step to help it? And actually, that's uh, that question came across when we started to plan. And actually, one of the things that have come up is you know we don't want to just do this one day event. So this is no. going to be what we, the way we're kind of framing it is that this is going to be the first of many steps as a city, and then in conjunction with all the other organizations where we're going to be constantly following up with people that want to get housed and give an event. So this is the first of many. Maybe not all of them are going to be Chinatown block parties, but we're going to have events targeted to or towards housing people. So this is not the only one, it's the first and of a series. Also that by name list, um, like I said, the city's going to be more strategic with its funding and um, what, what we're doing, like housing navigation, um, street outreach workers, per our, um, what the information that we're getting from the best practices and our consultant. So the by name list could be used by, you know, um, agencies who are working with the city um, and then it can, you know, they can come back to Chinatown and outreach those individuals. Um, to start working with them to get them connected with the right services and so forth. Um, so I think the first step to housing is building a relationship. Um, and then of course we all know that coordinated entry and um, all of that is necessary in order to get people housed. So we want to definitely follow the um, you know, they're, they're getting on the list to be housed, basically. We want to get them started with that. We want to get them started working with service providers and really, um, you know, have the city and service providers already, you know, establish relationships, but just, you know, establish those relationships as well. Then I guess also, like, uh, I think to, like, comprehensively answer your question, right? From my understanding, uh, we're going to, we, the city, are going to try to track the people who have, who were in who had an intake and then actually you know so after an intake right you get a referral and then after a referral you kind of get three days for the service provider essentially to say like hey like we've received this referral right whether they do something or not is totally up to the bandwidth of the organization I get that but I think this is a good way for us to kind of spot check that whole process as well um, but also like we now kind of have a vested interest in the people who have who have kind of like gone through the intake process um, at this event, like we would be able. So I guess, like in terms of the first step for housing, is because I totally agree with you. That's a very good point, actually. Is that like you know, like we could sit here and we could intake a hundred people, but then you know, if these service riders are already maxed out, then so they're just going to be put on the bottom of every single wait list, and then you know, and then they'll lose faith again, right? right. But I think that initially, I guess that this would be different, just because we're actually taking a vested interest in these folks and seeing, trying to see them through the whole process, which is, I guess. In, it's pretty important that we'll have their name and information because we can actually, I think this would be the first time that the city would be doing this, but we're actually like following up with the follow through of that, so. Okay, okay, yeah. I have a question. Uh, so in the future, will the Homeless Coalition be working with you? I mean, I'm, I'm sort of catching a drift here that we've got some parallel things going as, yeah. as opposed to, I mean, you know, our duplication yeah. versus coordinating. So like we want to work with the uh, with that coalition, and I think the goal is to uh, have them. And as we said earlier in the presentation, we invited them, but unfortunately because of the logistics, it's a weekend. It's a little hard for them to get a staff person. But the staff. <laughs> but the staff they have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, probably next time, probably the coordination will have to start from the beginning with them. So we can strategize on a day that they can also have their stock. They have not said no. 
And this will be a wider city thing, right? It won't be just focused on the folks down in a like four block area of Chinatown that we're going to target. It'll be anybody from across the city who can come in who's having trouble with housing, mm -hmm. keeping sustained housing, things like that. So that's, I think, important to make clear that it's just not the, this local area group here that we're focused to who definitely need the services. It's yeah, also that wider range of you know families where you're having four families living in a 1,200 square foot home yeah. because they can't afford getting into a place of their own. Families yeah. like that to come down here and start that housing process as well, I think, is really important. But what yeah. does that look like? What are we doing for that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to keep harping this. But like, what are we going to do for that family? What What is going to... They're not going to be in coordinated entry. They're not homeless. I think that... What are we... But that is more geared towards the Section 8, right? Right. Or, and if they are but here, the housing authority is here. But the waiting list will be closed by then. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think no, we're, no, trying to, we're trying to reach to like, like um, unfortunately, over at Sherwood Park, there's a, like a little mini encampment there of homeless people. So getting them to come from, and a lot of them, even though that's where they sleep, during the day they come and hang out here. And, and I know a few of those people, so that's why I know. Um, and then there's also another encampment over of uh, uh, um, Griffin and East Alisal that also are, that's where they sleep under those bushes and trees, but they, during the day they're here. Mm -hmm. So getting those people to come on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, or that Saturday to know that there is this program for them. They're, they don't, they're not always here yeah. because they're in those other locations of the city, mm -hmm. But you know, to come this day to get more to the Chinatown, mm -hmm. we and we have flyers that will be going out to the different sections where we've seen homeless, like mm -hmm. you said, because there's some even over here. There's, I mean, they're all yeah, over. Like, and then give them a flyer and let them know that they're and that they're, everything's going to be free mm -hmm. for them. Also, if you want to take some flyers for your organization and pass them around, there is some packets. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ultimately, I don't think we're trying to buy off more than we can chew. I guess is the mm -hmm. like takeaway. Yeah, I mean, I think. I just, like Larry said, I mean, you talking about a by name list, I mean, I think you could talk to Jeff Leonard and Jill Allen and some of the other, and they can give you that by name list, right? Like, they know who's here. Um, and so, and I think, it, I just want to make sure that there's something that's really productive and actionable, and if those guys aren't even participating, we are kind of duplicating, and it will be kind of like, why are we doing this, well, and why am I doing that, and if we want to be clear to folks, Mm -hmm. Right, so it seems like what is the first step? Should there be a handout? What should we articulate specifically? Should every booth have one handout that's the same about yes. the housing process? We are right, so there's like fire out. Okay, that'll that yeah. you know some something like that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, hand it, give some to the different agency booths that are going to be there. So like you said, they're passing on. The Maybe same. the day of the event, we just have a big package with those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a common voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah just, just on vacation, so she's not here. <laughs> I also, I think, just like it would be slightly different because we're actually looking to see the effectiveness of this. Like we, like I specifically have the same question that you just had asked. And so for me, I think like really trying to follow up and seeing, okay, like what happened when, when it finally gets to the referral stage and when it finally goes to a service provider, like what happens there. Because like when I go to these HMIS meetings, what I'm seeing now is that they're just it's 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 crazy just all the different things that go on when it actually gets referred to a service provider. Like a perfect right. example is like they say, Oh, we tried to contact them but we couldn't contact we couldn't reach the person who's unhoused. Right. But it's like, well then how in the world did they get a hold of the coalition in the first place? Or how did the coalition get a hold of them in the first place, right? right. Well so, so then I think you need to talk to the coalition about the confidentiality associated with cars. Mm -hmm. So for you to really see the outcomes, you need to make sure that they can share that data with you. Yeah. Because they, saw, I believe they ask people who are getting enrolled to sign a release of information that includes the participating agencies, mm -hmm. but it may not include the city. Yeah. And if you guys aren't um, HIPAA compliant, so you don't have the training in how to be yeah. confidential about personal information, you might not be able to get that. Yeah. So you should, you should definitely close that loop about what you're trying to find out and whether you're actually going to be able to get that. It could be de -identified. Okay. See, I don't know anything about it. I just know it's out there and then it's out there, it's bad. It's important, but it's complicated. 
<laughs> I wish it was that easy for like academic research. Like just, you know, if you can de-identify, because I do a lot of like veterans affairs stuff, I do a lot of like veterans issues, and it's just like, man, like, what a perfect subgroup of people. This is totally off topic, but like, what a perfect subgroup of people to study, because like every part of their lives is like documented, essentially. Mm -hmm. But everything they do is like connected to their health, right? So it's just like they, they never they never want to give that data up and you're like, God, just make it just anonymize it just for me, you know. Yeah. Is there a process that people will know uh, one group, uh, a homeless person uh, is more has a, has more of a bigger problem than the other homeless person? Is there is there are there groups that Besides, oh, this is this is really urgent problem. That's what coordinated. That's yeah. yeah. So that's like the vulnerability index, and also like assessing someone essentially. So like you would, yeah. Like this is kind of a weird way to put it, but like the worse off you are, you would accrue more points, right? Essentially. But uh, so you know, like the midpen is going to have uh, 20 units for men, or is it mentally? Uh, well, so yeah. So how how is that? How is that? How, did you How will that work? Well, so so there are 90 units in the community proposed to be built. Um, 20 of those um, are proposed to be people referred to us by the county through the whole person mm -hmm. care program. Mm -hmm. um, and they also are going to have to be classified as high utilizers mm -hmm. by the Medi-Cal managed care provider. Mm -hmm. um, and then another 20 will be taking referrals from interim. So they'll have to be clients of interim. Um, and then potentially we'll have units that will be these direct referrals from CARS. So we have an application into HUD for I think 10 units, might yeah. be slightly more. Um, and so those, so what the what that system does is it prioritizes you based on your vulnerability. And so no longer is it sort of you, you sign up for the waiting list first and you're first in line. Now it's based on the, these index indices. And so people will float to the top based on how sick they are and other things like that. And so we would take those referrals from CARS. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely a process, like whether it's like for housing yeah. or something like that. Like there's a process to determine the vulnerability. It's just that, you know, it's just frustrating and it's just, I know, you know, things, uh, it, it, it seems like, you know, don't take place, they're, they're, or they're, they're trying to, this this you know this group of people need this kind of help this kind of help and it's been a process it's a long process and it's just just seems endless. They are housing people though. I mean they yeah. have had you know some good outcomes. Dorothy's house. I mean yeah. you maybe don't see it on the street, but they they are actually moving people into housing. I wish Joe was here to tell you the numbers, but um, yeah. Well, I don't know if our, if our communities know enough. Of what you know, what's happening? All they see are tents and right. whatnot. So, mm -hmm. so, we really appreciate everyone that came. You know, this was a great discussion, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all, all on the uh, November 18th. So, if you have any follow-up questions for us, you can email me, uh, or um, and uh, we'll get a hold. We can have a quick chat if. Uh, you want to have a booth and all that, so we have some of that information already. Can I have the information, that information to some room? Yeah, we'll, we'll trickle it down. Okay. So, really appreciate everyone coming, and uh, also, if you want to take, take some of those flyers, and uh, we'll see you on the 18th.